Hello friends, I'm going to be sharing my new actions and the purpose of this video is how to make use of these actions in Adobe Photoshop. You can get the action in the description below for download, for free download. And also, if you don't have image for practice, you can also download this particular image we are using in the description below. This is Twisted Creative, Larry B. Manuel's name. If it's your first time on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. This is the image you are going to be using. For those of us who does not know how to bring this action into Photoshop, you are going to click on these lines here. If you click on these lines, you will notice that button mode is checked here. So if you click on this, you are going to uncheck the button mode to leave the button mode. We are out from the button mode. You can click on this again, then go to load actions. So this is the action. So if you click on the action now and click on load, you are going to see it on your Photoshop. So I'm going to cancel it because it's already there in my Photoshop. So this is the image we are going to be using. We are going to use our Ctrl J for extra one more copy. We are going to first of all remove blemish it from this image. Then we're going to take our patch tool. If you right click, you will notice how to have spot healing brush, healing brush. So we are going to use the patch tool to then we we'll zoom in very well. Then we we'll circle around any stuff and and drop it on a better position. So I'm doing this very fast so that it's not going to take us too much time. So we are going to go to the top side, close to the eyes, and these ones are small. Let's remove. There are some little one here. This can be handled by frequency separation or thereabouts. So okay. So we are done with removing all the blemishes. So this is the action. We are going to start by let's okay. Instead of us to get confused, let's go to the button mode. Let's click on this, click on this line and click on the button mode. Enable the button mode. So this is the button mode. We are going to be choosing them from here. So we are going to be getting the details from the overexposed area. We are going to use twist details from light. So we're going to click on this. Then we'll go to that spot. We can reduce or increase our brush opacity and flow. Then let's click on this area like so. So we just believe that this area is a kind of overexposed compared to the other parts of the image. So let's just do it this way. So let's see the before and after. This is before and this is after. This is before, this is after. So we've captured that. If you check this image now, I notice that it's a kind of overexposed. The exposure is too much to my liking. I don't know about you. So we are going to go to twist exposure, dark. We are going to click on it. Then you can see that automatically the image has become a little bit dark. Let's see the before and see the after. See the before, see the after. So we are going to be adding the color pop, which is this. This pop color pop is going to be directly on the image. So we're going to select the image and click on the color pop. And you see what happened here. Let's we are going to click on the eyes and teeth whitening now. Let's select the topmost layer. Then click on the eyes and teeth whitening. Then we'll pick our brush tool is already selected. Then we can increase the opacity to 80% or thereabouts. Then we'll go to the eyes and teeth. Can reduce the brush size to fit the white part of the eyes then we can clean up the red reddish eyes then you can also go to the teeth when painting the teeth you have to avoid painting all this red area then let's go by doing it like this you have to avoid those reddish areas then increase or reduce your brush size and paint carefully to avoid those pinky and reddish area. You can reduce your brush for the smaller parts. You can increase when necessary. So you can reduce your brush and continue painting. 
make sure you take your time to paint so we are done with the eyes and teeth whitening so we are going to be doing frequency separation so this is an 8-bit image we are going to be using 8-bit frequency separation so we are going to select this image and click on this 8-bit frequency separation here yeah. The radius has popped up so we have to change we have to okay let's start from let's start from 0 0.1 and pull it up so we are going to be stopping whereby we no longer see details just push it like three four five six i think we are okay for seven so let's say seven point two should be okay let's sit okay we are going to be working on these colors so make sure the color is selected. So with this color selected, so we are going to we're going to click on the brush tool and choose Misa brush. Then we are going to reduce or increase our brush size and we are going to brush on the image. So you have to separate you have to brush separately the mid tone, the highlights and the shadows. You have to brush them separately. You can brush as smooth as possible but you don't have to miss the highlights with the shadows or the mid-tone with the shadows so this is how it goes so you still have to avoid the eyebrows and some particular and some areas like the nose you have to do the top like this have to brush the mid tone separately then reduce your brush and brush the highlights here then in between the nose and the lip here you can see click and smoothen them up we can put on the detail layer and we can see go on clicking so we can go on and continue brushing so this is the mid tone so this is in between the nose and the lip then we can reduce our brush and mix up these areas then you can mix these areas like so then come here and mix this area separately this are uh, the dark area then this is mid tone you have to mix them separately can let go and mix here separately let go and mix separately then increase then this areas click on it separately So this is the highlight we have to click on this and let's go to the neck region let's go to the neck region and do the same we are going to be mixing like so so we're going to mix like this then the shadows should be brushed separately then the mid tone separately then i think these areas should be brushed like so You can copy my settings here if you wish you can copy my settings here the wet at 26 load at 27 percent then mix at 26 percent then your flow should be at 100 then you can continue so i'm just casually doing this area just for time's sake let's click here to mix it up and So I think we are done with the frequency separation. Let's see 
let's see the before and after the frequency separation they will go to so this is before the frequency separation this is after the frequency separation so make sure you are not on the group click on the top layer then we are going to be doing dodging and burning so we are going to click on burn first then we have this thing applied to this image but the brush is selected we have to change our brush to normal brush we're going to leave missile brush then we are going to take our opacity and flow down to like 12 or 11 let's say 10 should be okay for opacity and 10 for for flow and 10 for flow then we can increase and reduce our brush when necessary then we can just click on this areas like this. let's just casually do it let's casually do it let's click on this area like this so you have to make sure your foreground color is white and your background color is black for this stuff to work for this your brush to work effectively and make sure you are on soft round brush that means your hardness must be at zero then we can go on and continue clicking so we have to click on the dark areas to enhance the darkness around those areas so we can zoom in and reduce our brush size and can continue clicking here the reason why we dodge and burn so that our image is not going to be flat so we are going to burn this area like so then we'll go under the eyes here and burn also then here beside the nose so it's just looking like if we are not doing anything let's check the before and after so this is before and this is after this is before this is after let's continue have to burn this area also can reduce your brush or increase your brush when necessary have to burn this area so have to burn this area also so i will have to burn this area so have to take it like this down to this area so we have to reduce the brush and brush inside like so this line is a deep line so we have to make it deep have to create a little angle here like this and like this then take it to the nose here then after doing that we have to i think we are done with the burning okay let's add some on this area we are think we are done with the burning then let's go to dodge so we are going to be clicking on this twist dodge then we can pick up our brush to we have to make sure this layer max is selected not this icon so we have to select the layer max then we have to go dodging we have to dodge this area mostly on this point these spots of the nose that will lift up the nose very well so that is it you have to dodge this area increase your brush and dodge so i think we are almost done with the dodging because we don't really need enough we don't really have a lot to dodge here then we can place one here also can dodge here so as it's going to be brighter then for the forehead we just need to place something here to make it bright here 
So I think we are done with the dodging of the face. Let's see the before the dodge and after the dodge. This is before dodging. This is after dodging. This is before and this is after. So we are done with that. Let's see the entire dodge and burn. Let's put this in a group. This dodge and burn. Let's place them in a group with control G. This is before dodging and burning. This is after dodging and burning. The next thing we have to do is to enhance the makeup. So we have to click on makeup enhancement here so we have it then the brush selected already we can take our opacity and flow up so as to get them fast then we'll go to this area and paint on this makeup area so as you can see the so as you can see the makeup is being enhanced so look at the makeup let's increase and it check the blacks of this stuff then check the eyeliner then we can also check this other part like so they have to reduce the brush to to line the eyes very well so as you can see is looking more beautiful let's let's do it on the lip also so take a look at it now if you notice that the effect is too much you can always go to your opacity and reduce so let's leave it at 82 should be okay so we are going to click on lips highlight here so make sure to drag it to the top here then make sure the make sure the layer mask is selected with your brush selected then go to the lips and paint like so so this is the lip highlight the next thing we are going to do is the nose highlight if you click on this nose highlight then you go to the nose this time around your brush settings is going to come down you have to reduce your opacity and reduce your flow so that you softly drop it on the nose the next thing we are going to be doing is lips enhancement so we have to click on the lips enhancement then we'll go to the lips and we'll go to the lips and paint on the lips then we have to make sure our opacity is up and flow is up too. Then we have to click on the lips. We need to include this contrast pop here. So we have to click on it and boom. This is, <laughs> this is amazing. This is totally amazing. Then if you check, if you feel the contrast is too much, you can always go to your opacity and reduce. So this is this image with just the action. Let's see the before and after. Let's hold our alt and click on this. This is before and this is after. This is before, this is after. It's a very big difference here. Isn't that amazing? Let's see again. Let's see the before and after. Hold your alt and click on this eye, last eye button here. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. This is before, this is after. Isn't that amazing? This is the image with just those actions. It's not limited to outdoor images like this. You can also use it for studio images. I believe that is it for today. If you find it interesting, helpful, and useful, let us know in the comment section below telling us the area it has helped, the area it has not, and the area it would have helped. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that I don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching today's video. Creative people keep on creating, keep on creating. Stay creative. See you in the next one. Bye for now.